The continuing adventures of Blunty screwing around with quadcopters continues now. <laughs> Hello again, I am Blunty. Sorry for the cheesy opening. Uh, this is the Hubson X4. Specifically, it's the H107C model, or if you're American, H107C model. More specifically, it's the upgraded H107C model, which basically means it has a 720p HD camera built in instead of the standard def one that came on the original model. Now, this isn't a new quadcopter on the market. In fact, it's been around for about a year or so, and there's lots of reviews out there for it. But the reason I'm looking at it in this review is because all throughout my first experiences with quads, everything from the X5C1, the Nano, the Parrot Rolling Spider, I've had drone enthusiasts constantly and consistently recommending that I give this little bugger a go. And indeed, in my own research, I've seen the X4 pop up again and again and again as one of, if not the, most popular and highly regarded choices in palm-sized multi-rotor drones out there. So I kind of had to give it a go, didn't I? It's been praised for its stability, its well-behaved nature, its build and its price, and while normally I'd address these things later in our review, I'll say it now. It nails it. Everyone else was bang on. The X4 is a terrific quad. It weighs about 50 grams with the stock battery installed, and unlike the Nano, the battery is designed to be user replaceable. And it uses a common standard battery connector, so that it's really easy to get batteries for these things. So I also bought a 5-pack of spares. The ones I got were quite cheap and at lower capacity than the original, and a tad smaller, but they work great. Only with slightly diminished flight time, closer to 4 or 5 minutes instead of the 7 to 9 minutes from the stock battery. Unfortunately, because they were kind of cheap and nasty, I've already lost two of them to swelling. No big deal, they only worked out to about three bucks each, so whatever. Charge time is about 40 minutes for the stock battery. The design is nice, it's understated and sleek, and only really interrupted by the battery wiring dangling a bit gracelessly out the arse end. The controller has a nice comfortable design, but the plastic does feel a bit cheap, and the switches for trim do feel a bit nasty. Fortunately, the sticks feel smooth and accurate, and quite pleasant to use. This isn't as easy to fly as the Parrot Rolling Spider I just reviewed late last week. The sensor array here is much more simple, but it will keep itself level, but everything else, that's up to you. And this is one of the things that make it such a popular choice for hobbyists. It controls, responds, and behaves exactly like the big boy quads. It does take a moderate amount of skill and practice to fly well, and this makes for an excellent training tool, as it's just as well behaved indoors as it is outside. It is amazingly well behaved in the air, and once you build up enough confidence and skill to fly without the safety of the prop guard, it's even a bit better. It's nimble and twitch responsive, but without being jittery, and it does precisely what it's asked to do without fail. Basically, if you crash this thing, you crashed it. It's pilot error, no excuses. The motors are quite good too, strong enough to fight against even moderate breezes, and you can put it into a high rate mode that makes it much, much more twitchy and responsive, and significantly faster too. But I'd not suggest trying this mode until you're very comfortable with the default mode, as it's also much, much easier to slam it into the ground. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to fly in high rate mode, but it doesn't make for very good video being recorded on its onboard camera. But it is nice to be able to do a slow, smooth video in the normal mode, and then switch to a stunt-happy racer mode to have a bit of fun with at the literal click of a button. It uses a 2.4 GHz control frequency, so range is surprisingly long. It is in fact completely possible to have complete control of this tiny thing while it's so far away or so far up in the sky that you can barely see it at all. Of course, this isn't recommended, because if you can't see it, you're not going to be able to control it very easily, are you? But it's certainly possible. And of great interest to me, of course, being the video guy and camera nerd that I am, is the built-in 720p camera. Now, the whole shebang only cost me about $65, and that's the quad, the battery, the battery charger, the controller, a set of spare propeller blades, and the propeller guard. And I knew quite well what kind of camera sensor, camera module, and lens they were likely using, so I was never expecting cinematic glory. But, for its price, it can still capture clear enough video to have some fun with. And it makes for a nice cheap way to start messing around with drone videography, and indeed photography, although there is no photo mode. But I have pulled stills out of the video, and if you're using the outdoors, it defaults to a high shutter frame rate, which means very little motion blur, which means you can pull out stills from the video and have them looking pretty good. So I'll pop them up on Twitter for some fun shares. They're low res and a bit prone to macro blocking thanks to the aggressive video compression, but this is fun time, not serious face drone cameraman time. 
Now, the camera is integral to the body, so there's no stabilization, no gimbal, no vibration isolation even, and nowhere near enough room or power indeed for the processing power needed for digital stabilization. So, you're going to see every last twitch buffeting from the wind, you're going to see the tilt when you move horizontally in any direction, and occasionally you'll also get a bit of jello wobble too. The quality of the raw video you get spat out on the memory card is not spectacular. It is a bit soft, as you'd expect from a tiny little pinhole lens. Uh, there is a bit vignetting around the edges. The white balance isn't quite right. It does have a kind of purple hue to it as well. But again, this is all very common for this type of camera. You'll often see this type of camera in, in, in spy camera type things, in those little lighters and glasses and stuff. And they all look pretty much exactly like this. So I was expecting that. It can be fixed fixed somewhat a little bit in post by adjusting the colors and contrast, dropping the blacks down a bit to crunch them up, uh, and maybe even a little bit of sharpening, but not too much. There is a fairly aggressive compression going on here, so too much sharpening can make it look even worse. But, like I said, we're not after cinematics here, we're after fun, we're after a learning tool, we're after something to play with, to learn with, and for that purpose, well, I like it very much. And after a few flights and reviewing the video from them, you start getting a better idea and a better feel for what kinds of movements make for compelling shots. So as a tool to start generating some good drone videography habits, it's been fantastic. I very quickly found myself flying very differently when I'm trying to envision a shot, rather than just sort of flying around for fun and hoping I wind up with some interesting video at the end of the day. It's a bit like when we photo nerds take to the streets with old film cameras or go on photo walks with just our phones instead of the expensive fancy camera equipment we own. It's the limitations of the low tech that start inspiring creativity and forcing us to put more thought into what we're actually doing and why. Sure, the fancier gear makes it easier to get crispy, clear, stable results, but a tool like this will teach you more and it will wind up making you better still with the bigger gear once you go back to it or indeed work your way up to it. I do wish there was a wider angle lens on the camera though, it'd help with a more dramatic airborne perspective and even help reduce the amount of wobble perceived. Now, it is possible to mod the camera module, swap out the lens even, and some people have just gone the simpler route of attaching one of those clip-on fisheye lenses made for camera phones. And I have ordered parts to test out both of these options at a future date, I'll let you know how it goes. There is one gotcha with the camera though, well two really, one more annoying than the other though. Firstly, unlike some camera toting quads, there is no way to start or indeed stop recording from the remote itself. You have to hit a tiny button on the base of the quad to command the camera to start or stop. And that's a small annoyance. A larger one is the fact that if you neglect to stop the recording manually before disconnecting the battery, it will corrupt the video file completely, irrecoverably so. And aside from that, just a few times I've had the camera inexplicably refuse to even start recording. The micro SD card checked out fine, the video files I was recording before that point all worked fine, there were no faults, and I was using a good quality SanDisk micro SD card. The camera just simply refused to record, and I'm yet to figure out exactly why that is. But it was a rare occurrence, and frankly not unheard of for the kind of camera modules in use here. There are actually three variations of the X4 model. One basic model without a camera, one with a built-in camera, that's this one obviously, and another one that has a camera but a screen on the controller to let you fly from a first-person view. And as cool as that FPV flying sounds, the camera quality on that highest-end model is actually poorer. So, as a camera nerd, I chose the C model for its 720p HD recording. In my research, I also noticed that at CES, Hubson announced that there's a new model coming out very soon, called the Hubson X4 Camera Plus H107C Plus. It looks a bit different, but more importantly, it has the ability to altitude hold, and that means you can wind up getting more stable shots, because you won't be constantly riding the throttle in order to try and keep a stable altitude. And I don't actually know if they're going to upgrade the camera or lens, but that'd be nice too. I guess we'll find out. There's also something that they're calling the X4 Pro, which really isn't part of the same family of drones. They're just sort of cashing in on the excellent reputation that the little X4s already have. But it's a bigger drone, and it's looking like they're positioning it to compete against the likes of the DJI Phantoms and the Parrot Bebops of the world. A larger, very sophisticated drone with a custom camera, a gimbal system, and a fancy new controller for FPV flight that also has what is basically a 7-inch Android tablet built in to let you do all kinds of fun stuff. I am very, very curious about it.
But meanwhile, the H107C model of the X4 comes highly recommended. It is an absolute blast to fly, once you've built up a bit of piloting skill anyway. And the extra fun of an adequate, if not brilliant, 720p camera, and considering it's been around for about a year and there is a new model coming soon, the price right now is unbeatable. I paid about $65 for mine about six weeks ago, but in the last few days I've seen it listed on sites like Banggood for as little as $45. And considering the new model is pre-ordering at $129, that makes it damn good value. So, I'll add my voice to the choir of voices singing the praises of and recommending the Hubson X4 to anyone with an interest in remote-controlled quadcopters. Newbies and established hobbyists alike will find much to appreciate here. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.